Confused about which racing game to play or collect for on the Nintendo, Nintendo 64? This great console has an overabundance of racers. Thankfully, today I'm here to help. What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex, this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. For this week's review, I'm taking a look at LEGO Racers. Developed by High Voltage Software and published by LEGO Media. With a North American release date of October 12th, 1999. This game was also ported to the PlayStation, Windows, and Game Boy Color. And in 2001, we'll receive a sequel called LEGO Racers 2, which was also ported to the PlayStation, Windows, and Game Boy Advance, but no Nintendo 64 port. The story for this game goes, Rocket Racer has become completely bored and decided that he wants to host a tournament in Legoland to decide who is the greatest LEGO racing champion of all time. There's six total circuits in this game where you can build your own character with some limitations. It's, it seems like a pretty novel idea, but it's actually pretty limited once you get into it. Now, one of the cool things about this game is you can create your own cart or have one randomly generated for you. There's actually a surprisingly amount of creativity with the various Lego bricks that you can use for this game. Pretty neat. You then get to race said cart across 11 courses against five other characters. Now, for all intents and purposes, this game is pretty much a Diddy Kong clone. Why do I say that? Well, you have your typical power-ups, like shields, boosts, and missiles, but this actually takes me to the first major issue of the game. In order to upgrade your power-ups, you have to collect white item bricks. The problem with this is that they're usually sitting on the very edges of the tracks or in just absolutely horrible, awkward spots, which make it very difficult to try to race, or if you're trying to race perfectly, it just makes it really awkward to get these. To continue this train of thought, Unless you're racing perfect or near perfect, you're often going to need these items or powered up items just to compete against the computer because they can be pretty ruthless. Next, I want to touch briefly on the sound design. The music in this game is actually pretty good, but it has kind of an almost childlike vibe to it, so keep that in mind if you ever decide you want to pick this up. It's not bad, but it's, it's a bit different is all I can really say about it. Now, the final part of this game that I want to address is the controls. Unfortunately for this kart racing game, they're very, very twitchy and also stiff at the same time. I'll explain. If you move the analog stick too much in one direction or another, you'll often feel like you're going to crash off into a wall or suddenly veer right off course. But when you're trying to power slide or drift around corners, the controls can almost feel stiff and like you're just not quite drifting the way that you want. It's it's just a hot mess. So, overall, is LEGO wor Racers worth adding to your collection and picking up today? Well, to be totally honest, unless you're a hardcore LEGO or kart racing fan, no. I would just suggest stick to the classics like Diddy Kong Racing or Mario Kart 64. And if those games are a bit out of your price range, or you've completely burned out your copies, then I would say take a look at some other games such as Revolt, Wipeout 64, Extreme G, or one game that I've very much grown to enjoy since I started, started this whole channel thing, which is Scars, or S-Cars. I've done a review of that one a while back too, so if you feel like checking that out, go ahead. That's all for this review, everybody. Thanks for watching. Until next time.